Hey, it's Scott Jansen, and today I want to teach you how to be more confident. Knowing how to be more confident is the difference between a life of holding yourself back and underachieving and a life of unlimited potential with the Midas touch. If you've ever felt that nervous shaking and dry mouth, you would agree that having no confidence is such a hindrance. Now, the subject of confidence and how to cure it is as confusing as the confidence issue itself. Studies from every angle have stated facts like if you're smiling, you can actually send a message to your brain to be happy. Or even if you take three deep breaths, you can extract the position you're in that is making you unconfident in the first place, and the list goes on. And while these studies and experts say this, let me share with you something you can do to not just rescue yourself in the moment, but finally stop your confidence issues once and for all. Believe it or not, when I was younger, I was not just shy, but I actually hated leaving the house. I actually went to school and was bullied for being this way, and my only friend was the books I actually read. This was my way to escape. So to contrast to where I am now, and I've sat in front of 8,000 clients for every problem you can imagine, I can talk in front of thousands of students at my seminars, and I can talk to strangers. And as a matter of fact, from using this technique, if you want to call it a technique, I don't even get embarrassed in situations and I can enjoy myself fully. This confidence trouble was the most important thing I needed to overcome when being trained as a therapist and especially running a business. I know that having limited confidence stops a lot of entrepreneurs and new therapists from putting one foot forward and pursuing their life goals. So ask yourself this, where would knowing how to be more confident in your life help? Maybe it's speaking with new customers to persuade them to buy your service. Maybe using your therapy skills with even the most difficult of clients running a business and being confident in your ability, maybe taking calculated business risks that will allow you to grow your income, maybe taking a stand in your life that you have a vision and want to pursue it, or maybe all of the above and more, of course. Lack of confidence kills. It kills our dreams. It takes control of our thoughts and can even cripple us to where we cannot move. So in order to know how to be more confident, you must understand this, and I'll keep this plain and simple. Your confidence issue is an unconscious thing, meaning it's automatic. It's triggered by a situation, an event, or even a feeling. And because you can't shut it off when you want to, this automatic behavior happens without your control and you experience the side effect consciously, meaning that you can feel and sense your body shaking. You can feel the dry mouth and the clammy hands and even hear the nervous voice. But here is the twist. The reason why you're not confident is not what you think it is. Let me explain. As I said, your confidence issue exists in the unconscious mind. It's automatic. So when you've tried to fix this automatic behavior, you have used your conscious thoughts. As in, maybe you've tried to fix it with a three-step formula or by breathing deeper or trying to think positive. But the bottom line is, what you are unconfident about and what you think it is, is incorrect. If you're trying to figure out your own problems consciously, you can only guess. Hence why it hangs around and the confusion you get while trying to figure it out. Sure, you may bypass it after a minute or so of deep breathing, but wouldn't it be great just to get rid of it once and for all? You can either cope with it for the rest of your life or finally get rid of it. So how do you get rid of it? Firstly, I suggest you stop trying to fix it consciously, meaning if you've been told to try and find the root cause or think of when it first started in order to give it up, stop. This guessing game only serves to frustrate you because you'll never get to the point of it and you don't have to. Now, as a side note, the more you actually fail at this or anything in life, the better you get at failing and you actually attach failure to the equation and this is when it gets really messy. So now the science, if you will, is out of the way. I'll show you what I did. Here is what happened to me. I can remember clearly wanting to ask a girl out in high school, and for all intents and purposes, I was the fat, geeky, awkward kid, just like you would see in those teen movies. And at the thought of doing this, I felt nauseated, sweaty, and I was unable to think of what to say. My mind was locked into that voice inside my head saying, don't do it, you're a loser, she'll never talk to you. And because I couldn't escape this, I only had one choice. Now at the time, I was reading books on the brain and psychology and noted that the more you concentrate on a negative thought, the more you will feel it. And that's what was happening. But I also noted that over time, the feeling would pass and your regular cognitive function would come back online. But this could take several minutes. And I didn't have several minutes. I had seconds. So what I did was talk to myself inside my head. I told myself, if you will, to hurry up. If I was going to be nervous, just hurry up and finish it because I was going to speak to this girl no matter what. So I forced the feeling to increase and boy, was that a bad move. 
I felt in every part of my body and it was intense. But as it got intense, I could actually feel it subsiding as if it was running out of fuel. Essentially, I was peaking the nervousness quickly and it was running out of steam. So I kept forcing it to hurry up. And within about 45 seconds, it was depleted completely. Now, close to two decades later as a therapist, I understand how this works. When you force yourself to confront what is scary, the mind has to adjust. It's got no choice. It adjusts to a situation that you would normally run from. And as a matter of fact, this is the same philosophy I use with my clients' addictions, phobias, and even habits. It's quick, but it's intense. So if you're having confidence issues, anxiety or fear, it's all the same thing really, here is what to do. Step one, stop trying to figure out why it's there. Guessing only makes it worse. Step two, when you feel it, talk to yourself like a game and tell your mind to increase it quickly and keep taunting it to hurry up. Step three, wait for the peak and don't stop talking. Step four, get on with your life. And as a side note, by the way, the girl did say yes to the date.